Yo guys, what's going on in the YouTube world? It's your boy DJ The Leaf. But you can call me Kai when it comes to the Digimon world. I am Tamer Kai. But today I would like to do a deck profile for you guys. Now this deck is referring to what I had a while back ago, or should I say I still have now until I recompose the deck. I'm not sure how this one's gonna work. I'm still trying to say yes or no to certain things. But you know, I would like to give you guys an idea of what this deck can do. This is the Vmon deck, Virgin Pyramon, aka Imperial Dragon Mode. Now, the one thing I want to say, just to make sure everybody understands, this deck is mostly consistent about jamming. So anything that can help you excess in jamming and keeping yourself from not dying to your opponent's security is great. There's not a lot of blue, I would say, that can surpass a lot of your opponent's Digimon, especially since I think most of the Digimon securities are usually, or at least Megas are not, what, a little higher than 12,000. But you can get the point once I go over this deck. So let's kind of get started. First of all, we run for the Digitomas. Technically, it's all Vmon. Well, Demi Vmon, should I say. There are four Demi Vmons and one particularly different Demi V1. So this Demi V1 says right here, and remember this is an inherit effect, of course. Once per turn, when this Digimon becomes unsuspended during your main phase, it gets a thousand DP for the turn. So basically you swing and somehow it untaps itself. That's at one thousand for you. Now I have a combo set up for where I can get that, but that's only if I have this card under it, then it benefits me. But at times I wonder if I should replace it with a new egg, but I think they got some more support for Demi Vmon coming up soon, for Digitama anyway, or more support for Vmon in general, but we'll go over that later. Now, I got four of these. These is what you really need right here. This is the big AKA play out win. Try not to get that light beaming on there, sorry. So the card says here, and sorry, I'm trying to keep my hand balanced. Whew, this thing is not balanced, there we go. So it says here, when attacking, once per turn, if this Digimon has jamming, draw one card, so any Digimon has the key word right there in red. Jamming. You get to draw one card once per turn. And you can't say that's not bad because that gives you a lot of options to play out your hand. Now, you're running 40. These are literally your main plays right here. This one is just more of a bonus if you think you're going to have a problem with certain Digimon your opponent carries. But that's all your Digitamas because you only have five, of course, in the deck. So, I run... Literally, we're going to go over the basics. Your boy Vmon right there. Look, look at him. He, he just don't know when to stop, right? He, he don't know when to stop. He, he just keeps swarming. <laughs> All right, so I run four of this one and then two of these. So with this one, it says once per turn, when this car, Digimon, of course, un becomes unsuspended during your main phase, activate the trigger, draw one, aka draw a card. So technically swing and somehow during your turn, it gets unsuspended again. That's a draw card. So we have one that says you get the draw card. One says you get a thousand. I run two of these because, like I said, I have cards to kind of benefit for it. But we're going to wait until I get to that point and I'll kind of give a little detail. I'm not going to do too much. And then, of course, four of these. Because, like I said, this deck is all about jamming. AKA, jamming states on it. This Digimon cannot be deleted by your opponent's security effect. So any Digimon with security that's over 2,000, it doesn't matter. Think of it as erasing your opponent's battle power. And say, screw your security because I don't care. Die. V hit, but V hit, but V hit. <laughs> Sorry. Boy, if I had a sound effect for that one, let it play in the background, that'd be hilarious. So, the next one we want to play is one Terry Mon. Now, I ran this because I know there are green has some nasty cards that does in memory boost like crazy if your opponent has. Like certain cards active and all like that. You don't want them to get more memory than you and then put you in the pickle. So I was like, especially for the fact if it's blue and they can get memory control. It's like, nope. Your opponent cannot gain memory except through a tamer. So if your opponent does not have a tamer, they can't get memory. So the only memory y'all get will be, hey, you only get three memory because you're leader, your tamer and that's it. I only run one. I ran two, but it seemed like it wasn't that effective. So I just say screw it and just run one. It's not a bad card. I run this level, uh, the um cost of... Three, Gobamon, only because it gives you on deletion. That means, you know, Digivolve into a champion, it gets one memory. Now, I could change it for a lo another level uh, two cost instead of a three, but I'm looking into it right now. Like, for example, 
the two golden mon right there and your boys the elect mons now for the reason for that is because there is this thing as rookie rush but at the same time if i'm going to get bombarded by somebody i might as well be prepared so i at least have four digimon that cost me only two so it's like hey it's on here you got zero one two or if you're at one it's at like one two bam they ain't going that high they can't make any big plays they can probably attack you but they can't make a big play out of it so that would be all the rookies you know like i said this is all about the v mon life man you gotta know this so let's talk about champions now i'm gonna be honest to you guys like i said my rookies and champions should be my main trump card winning plays but it all depends on if i get to play this stuff right so this is kind of like to me a staple at points four blockers I don't care what kind of deck I did build. I feel like four blockers are like the best thing to have. Three depending on the type of deck color you're running. But any other decks, it should be for my personal opinion. Don't have to quote me on this. But I run four Grizzes. That's my blocker for the deck. I run two Gorilla Mon because of the one cost uh Digivolution. If it wasn't for that, I probably would not run the card. But just so I can keep it low cheap cost Digivolutions, I will. Next, I run one, two, three V-Dramons. Now, for the reason I run this, because it says on here, when you have a blue tamer in play, Digimon gains jamming. So it's like, okay, once I get my tamer out, my Digimon has jamming. So already, you're looking at the V-Mon from Rookie and the V-Dramon right here in Champion that has jamming at portion. Very scary. Don't want to get hurt by it, but hey, Jamie is a Jamie is a mean thing in this game, and of course, because like I said this is a V Mon deck, X V Mon. Now, this card right here helped me win so many of my games at random because of its effect. Now, when you digivolve into this, it says unsuspend one of your level four over Digimon. So you can say, okay, let's just say, for example, I had a blue tamer out. This one attack. Uh, let's see what's the other option I can use. All right, I had v, my regular Vmon. So I have Vdramon and Vmon on the field. Now, let's just say these are the only two right now. Now, the problem is I can win the game because my opponent has no more security because I lost the last two. They have no blockers. It's like, oh, I have, what, two? Let's just say I'm at two right now. And it's like, okay, fine. You know what? I know how I can win. Say so Vmon will digivolve to your boy X Vmon. XV monster face says, okay, I'm suspending level four or lower. V Dramon stands. And you're going for the security kill. This combo right here on its own made me one of a couple of my games where rather it be this V Mon gets untapped or another Digimon with jam. It it punishes so hard, guys. Like people sleep on this card thinking it's not that good at moments. And I it's a very good card. Do not think this card cannot beat you in the game. I promise you, it'll be your death sentence in the long run. I'm not even playing. So don't sleep on XV Mon. He is a very good and strong champion. All right, guys, that will be the end of the champion lineup. Let's get to the next part of the day. The ultimates. Now, to, I'm going to be real, guys. My ultimate lineup is very plain and very slim. Wow, I was, I was about to say simple. No, very plain and very simple. So I run four of two type of uh, two cards. I run four of the Imper not Imperial Dramon. Wow, I call that every time by mistake. Pyil Dramon, and I run four of Dino Beamon. So why? Why DJ? Why would you run it on four each only? So as the him one, like I said, jamming. My thing of this deck is literally every card should have a jam. If it doesn't have jamming, then why am I having it unless there's some other purpose behind it? Now he has jam, but his inherit also hurts this hurts people so bad. When attacking once per turn, if this Digimon has Imperial Digimon in this name on suspense, so I can say I can attack with this, and then if I have Imperial Digimon on top, well, my bad, I should say let me say it correctly. If I have Imperial Digimon on top of this card, I swing with that Imperial Digimon. His effect will clear. Say, oh, I activate his effect since it's once per turn since I attack. I can restand him. So it's like, oh, guess what? That's two attacks with jamming. Oh, gosh, that's not going to be fun. I run him at four because, one, like I said, this is literally the XV Mon deck. Now, why are you running four Dino B Mon? First of all, one, like I said, it's still a V Mon deck. And two, it's another form. This is technically if 
worm mod took the lead instead of XV mod. One, this has piercing, which it hurts. And if you can break through any opponent's Digimon to get rid of them, it's like, okay, fine. I'm swinging at the Digimon that has like lower than 7,000 right there. Not only do you pierce and destroy that Digimon, you also confirm a security check. I run four because, one, this is the only technical green as of right now in this deck unless I change it to something else. But with piercing and jamming, come on, why not? That hurts. Like, I'll be afraid if this thing had, like, maybe 9,000 and it does it and I can break through a lot of my opponents. Whoo, that's going to be nasty with them being blockers and everything. But if you can't break them, well, you get punished. You get to make them lose one, but they make you lose one and also in the process. The only thing that sucks about this one, it doesn't have a inherit that'll help your Mega. But with that piercing jamming, it still helps in the long run. So it's not a bad ultimate. Someone was telling me, uh, someone made me thought about putting one more ultimate in here, but I was like, nah, I feel like this is just right at eight. I feel like I should not put no more than eight as of right now for this deck. Unless I can come up with a new strategy strategy now comes the final area technically the megas to the ultimate not i don't know why they call some like omni mega when they're is when they classify as ultra it don't make no sense but let's continue on we got like metal guru Mon. now i only run one of these but it has a reason when attacking you play a little four lord digivolution card under this one right here so that anything that's under under it that has a digivolution that is four or less you get to play it and it says on top of this all right the glare kicking in <clears throat> play one low four lower digivolution card under this card as another digimon without paying his memory call so technically you can say oh vmon was under him i swing at the base effect i will take vmon from under him and play him out on the field or, for example, let's say you use a blocker by, by mistake. You use your Grismon, the one thing you did not want to play because your opponent has one more attack. Okay, instead of Vmon, you bring your Grismon out. That way, you can actually survive one more battle unless they got a way to get rid of your Grismon from the field. Because you can block them off and keep them from destroying your, well, your life. <laughs> I mean, what more do you need me to say? So, that card has very, very good potential. The next one is one reason why I say my level 4s and my level 3s are like my pride and joy right now. Leprimon. Now, Leprimon has two different effects that I like about it. One is on Digivolution. When you may play one level 4 lower Digivolution card of one of your Digimon. Now, notice it said one of your Digimon cards as another. So, you can play... So, like, the weird thing how they say is you may play one level four lower Digivolution card of one. So, the fact is that it's th if there's, let's say, this one and this one. If I Digivolve on top of this, even if he has a level four or lower, I can choose this card and say, okay, hey, like, I'll pull Grismon from this. Oh, I want the Vmon also out as well. Just because of that Digivolution. So, you can choose that card. You don't have to choose the one with Leprimon, but if you have to, then Yes. But otherwise, you can use another Digimon for that target. And you're not paying the memory cost. Like, these two are in sync. Like, it's scary. Then the second effect, it says, all your level 4 lower game jamming. That's why I told you my level 4s are probably so, like, my Vmon, even my X Vmon at that moment will have jamming. So it's like, this has jamming already. He did not. Now he has jamming when he attacks. So now all my level 4 and lowers are the price and happiness of this deck because he's out. No one wants jamming on all Digimon, especially even on champions, let alone rookies. Vmon's already scary. No one don't like dealing with him. So the next card we're going to go to is the Ace in the Hole. Imperial Jamon Dragon Mode. I run four of them. Why? Why four? So remember I told you only run those eight for ultimates? It says right here when you one of your um when one of your Pyildramon or Dino Beamon would digivolve into this card in your hand, reduce the memory cost of this card by two. So technically, this is a five cost, guys. Why the worry would you want to pay five? You could pay three just by digivolve on top of this. Now, if you read the effect, one it has jamming. So nope, no security is going to destroy me besides option cards. Two, 
Unsuspend all of your Digimon with Jammy. Now, here's a funny catch that I don't think not a lot of people catch this on to. So, let's use this one. Let's just say I have, like, basic Digivolution stuff. So, you see me. I got Pyildramon right now. So, let's just say this is in my hand. I swing with him. Now, I have, let's say I have three memory right now. I'm at the three marker. I will say I Digivolve after I got the Jammy, since nothing destroyed me. Digivolve Pyildramon into Imperial Jamon. Now, Cuz's effect says, um, unsuspend all of your, uh, your jammy Digimon. Now, keep in mind, like I said, if Leprimon happens to be on the field, why this comes off? That means any champion, any rookie that happens to be out on the field, because they technically have jammy on my turn. That means all of this is unjammy. Um, he doesn't get jamming on his own. It's just everything is for lore. So all this is just going to be in pain because you're going to get hurt because every single one is just going to swing in with jamming. And it's very, it's very hurtful. But the combo I was talking about earlier is that you digivolve with this. I mean, not digivolve. You attack, first jam, digivolve, then it becomes unsuspended because of itself. Now, the way you want to do is swing again. Now, remember, that's this is the second attack. His inherits that it states. If this Digimon has Imperial Jamon in his name, unsuspended, so you got the effect say, hey, once per turn, because of his inherit, I, and this is an Imperial Jamon, I can unsuspend it. That's two hits. Now, three. You got three hits within one and two off of this one because of the Digivolution and his inherit. So do not sleep on this card, guys. So if you see this happening, guys, someone starts swinging at you with the um, Pyel Jamon, be aware if they got three memory. This card's coming out for two more swings, so be prepared, guys. Don't don't let this overkill you. Like I know I caught people with this, but it's funny. So lastly but not least, Omnimon. Now the problem with this deck I seen, and I'm not gonna lie, is that I cannot handle the black decks for all those blockers. They really cause a lot of problem because, for example, it says Ty. Let's use Ty for example. On my turn. All my opponents uh black cards get a thousand boosts. So some of them will pass your you know your boy right here, Imperial Jamon. They can't do nothing. So if they are past tw they're 12 or higher, it dies. It don't win nothing. It stops right there. So when it comes to Omnimon being in play, one, he can win against every single one of those battles. Two, he gets two swings. And not only that, when did you evolving? Choose one of your opponent's Digimon and delete all of your opponent's Digimon with the same name. So if they had Gardramon, all Gardramon destroyed, or Andromon, all Andromon destroyed. No matter what number they are, if they come out, the thing is, as long as their name is Andromon or whatever that name is, they're all deleted. It may be a six cause, but in the long run, think about this. This card may be saving your life. I want to run two, but I don't have the money for this. This card is kind of pricey. But I'll give you another one later on. So that's technically Megas to Ultra. Remember, guys, this is a Ultra. They need to clarify that. Not Mega Ultra. Since they finally gave it a category from back then, because it technically was no category at all. So now we're going to talk about the options and tamers, which is the remaining thing I got left. For this deck, I ran three Spark Hammers. Spark Hammer stays on there, you gain a memory. But if it got hit by security, you gain two instead. Three, I wanted to say run a play set, but it was not bad at three, so I left it that way. The one thing that's a lightsaber, Cocutus Breath, aka Ice Wolf Claw. One, it hurts because it's one, it's a seven cost. That's a lot of memory to burn. But at the same time, if it's a security hit, this card's effect is main effect is activated, which says on here, return one of your opponent's Digimon to his own hand. So let's just say, hey, your opponent got a Omnimon now on you. You only have four memory, but at the same time, you do not want to die to that. Oh, forget it. I play by hand. Cookie's breath. Turn that hand. All his Digivolution sources are in trash while wow, you're safe. But you know this card is still in his hand. You know for 100% fact it's still in his hand. So, yeah. Good luck. But at least it buys you time to be prepared just in case he tries it one more time. You better hope that you have a second one just in case. Now, Hammer Spark can be four. I think it's almost like a positive stable to be four but yeah now the last three is the tamers now 
I'm running Davis, VMOS partner, of course. Now, as you can read right here, it says at the start of your turn, if you have two or less memory, your memory is goes to three. So instead of people always keeping you like, oh, no, I'm going to put you at one. No, you automatically go to three at the start of your turn. Now, when this card is played, reveal the top three cards of your deck. Add a blue and green card among them to your hand. And then place the other ones in any order. So this is still good hand advantage because, one, you can add two cards to your hand or maybe just one. And then think of this also in another way. If you got to go digging through your top three and found out all three of those were whiffs, even if you don't want, even if you didn't want to get the card, you can get one and then you can get rid of the top ones that maybe where it's like, oh, I didn't need this card. This needs to be in the bottom deck so I don't draw it. Bam, there you go. You just say yourself some draw time. I run three. I used to, I was going to run four, but I couldn't figure out how to set everything into the build yet. So I'm still working out new ideas. But guys, that's the that's the deck profile. I'm hoping you guys like what you see. I hope you know your boy me and Vmon kind of help you out. And hopefully, I will have more deck profiles later on in the future. Now, if you would like some tips or you know play styles of how I should play this or combos, like I said I kind of taught you to, showed you the basic combos that will help me won the game before. But if you would like some ideas or you know you would like to see a certain deck profile, let us know. Me, my brother, and a buddy of mine named Brian, we're all willing to help you out and come up with ideas to how we can make a deck efficient, or let alone if it has to be budget. If it has to be a budget deck, let us know. Make sure if you got ideas about this deck down below here, leave a, com leave a comment in the comment section. Make sure you click a like as well. Subscribe to the channel. Tell me things you want to see happen for Digimon. Like I said, we got a lot of things we got planned, so without further ado, this is your this is your boy, Tamer, of course, Kai, saying thank you for watching this. Like, subscribe, share with your friends. Tell me what you think about this one, and let me know if you want to see a different deck profile. Even I like I said, I'll take recommendations. Make sure you just put it in the comment section. Till then, peace out, take care, have a great day.